Hey guys, how's it going? I'm laughing right now. Let me tell you why I'm laughing. I have literally reshot this video probably six times and deleted the last five versions because a couple of times I was yakking and it was not recording. And then a couple of times I went way too long. So here's the deal. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to, that makes no sense. I'm going to stop rambling and I'm going to get right to the point because I'm actually very, very excited. I was texting with my um, BFF Sherry about this, who I've been texting with for never met in person. Sherry, how long have we been texting? Probably 15 years. She was like my first fitness friend online. Um, and then Whitney, my trainer. And I was kind of getting everything ready. Today is my first official uh, day on a new program, new diet. Um, I say official because really Whitney got me my diet plan on Wednesday. I've been using the first three weeks of January to really start getting back into working out. You guys know I was uh, sick with the flu for probably, you know, varying levels, five or six weeks, the end of the year. And before that it was backpain.com. So it was a rough, rough end of the year last year, but I've had a rough end of the year the past two years in a row. And I can proudly say I certainly can't predict if anything's going to happen to me, if I'm going to get injured, if I'm going to get sick, anything like that. But I have made such tremendous progress um, in making changes in my life, whether it's habits, procedures, policies, whatever you want to call it, changes um, that I'm making to my house. I did a lot of decluttering, and decluttering is going to get to my point in two seconds. Um, I've just made big changes, um, really doing a lot of hard work on myself. It started probably back in April of last year um, and has continued and even most dramatically, I'd say, started in October. I referred to this a little bit in my last videos. In my last videos, you guys, I told you about one of the big moments of clarity for myself professionally, personally, um, everything is realizing how I have, with running this business, I've gotten to be this person or I allowed myself to become this person that was, um, what is this saying? I'm trying to remember that saying. Is it jack of all trades, master of none? I think maybe. You know, where it's like you're addressing just a ton of stuff, but you're really not conquering anything. That's really what I recognized and what I shared with you guys in my last video was with all this multitasking, with all of this, you know, I was full of anxiety and stressed because I was never finishing everything. And then I was so stressed about the things I had to finish that I kept procrastinating. When I had that moment of clarity, all of a sudden I was like, wow, it's pretty simple to make changes here. And so that was step one. But step two happened. This is a big one for me, you guys. And I know a lot of you are going to be able to relate, to relate to what I'm saying. I just know it. Um, in the uh, end of last year, like I told you, one of the things that I did was decluttering. I mean, I went through my whole house and, and there were drawers that I hadn't addressed, whether it was my technology drawers in my office, if it was just, you know, my file cabinet that I have all of my important documents and, you know, stuff I've just thrown in there, medical receipts, tax receipts, all this stuff. My closet, I'm going through my closet and I'm organizing all my workout clothes, my workout um, shoes, everything. Putting and I bought hangers and, and, and hung stuff so I wouldn't have stuff thrown here and there. I organized all this stuff and then, you know, a lot of that I was purging, purging a lot of like old stuff I'd hung on to. I had a million tank tops that were, I didn't like the style anymore, they weren't long enough, yada, yada, yada. But as I started organizing my clothes, it became clear to me that whether it was my personal clothes or my workout clothes, I was looking and I'm like, there's so much in my closet that I don't wear. And I always wear the same things. And I, I, you know, started to think about that. And I started, like I've told you guys before, when you figure out stuff about yourself, you don't just have one moment like, wow, I tend to eat when I'm mad. It, that's not gonna help you really get anywhere. Sometimes that's just the beginning. But if you can work back in yourself and really be brutally honest with yourself, you can figure some stuff out and make big impactful changes instead of saying, well, I've always been this way, you know, I'm X age, you're never gonna change me now. Can't stand it when people say that. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. That's baloney. So, gosh, my throat is sore. I have shot this video, like I said, six times.
Okay, so as I'm looking at all my clothes, you know, I, it, it just hit me and how, how long some of these clothes have sat in my closet. Um, it hit me and so many of these fitness clothes, you know, I'm in the fortunate position that I get sent a lot of stuff. I had the tags still on so many of these clothes. And you know why, you guys? The reason that I haven't worn half that stuff is that I look at it and there's some issue about myself that I'm so ridiculously, overwhelmingly insecure and hard on myself about that I won't put that on because maybe I tried it on or maybe I'm looking at it going, oh, you know, these Under Armour pants, those are bright yellow. There's no way I'm going to wear those. And I don't want to put them on to go to the gym because, you know, my thighs are too big and everyone's going to laugh at me. I mean, maybe I'm not consciously going through that whole line of thought, but really that's what's going on in my head. If you're honest with yourself, you know, you've got to be honest with really what's going on inside or you're, you're not, in my opinion, going to make change. So I have all that stuff. And then I realized too, the reason that I have worked out at the gym less, um, certainly after I got injured, is that when I was working out and training with my friend Laura um, last summer, you know, first this first part of last year until whenever it was that the back pain started going in, we were religious. Every single day at five o'clock, we got together and nothing could stop me. You know, and even if we had, you know, a fat day, however we felt, nothing could stop me. And then, when we couldn't get together, I had my gym membership. My gym, gym is five minutes away, literally five minutes away. And yet I'm not going. And when I'm really brutally honest with myself, the reason that I'm not going is that deep inside, not only is this sad and wrong, but it's also in a way, you kind of have to smack yourself and go, get over yourself. People really don't pay that much attention to you, Kelly Alexa. Um, I actually didn't want to go to the gym because of my ridiculously overwhelming deep insecurity because I think, oh, there everybody I walk by is gonna look at me and go, she has fat above her, you know, Nike top in the back. Why is she here? Or, you know, last time I saw her, I think she didn't, she looks like she's five pounds heavier because in my head, I think that if I know I'm five pounds heavier from the back issue or back, whatever it was, at whatever point I was, I think everybody knows what I know and that they're evaluating me as ridiculously difficult or hard as I'm evaluating myself. That is, again, not only probably narcissistic and thinking that people really care that much about me that when I walk in, they're all going to stop and go, oh my God. Um, they're probably worried about their own stuff, okay? But number one, I am giving, I have been giving into these demons of my insecurities and being, and then allowing myself to beat myself up because of it. So it starts over here with, I'm so insecure, I don't like the way I look, so I'm just not gonna wear that top. I'm not gonna wear those pants. I'll save those for another day. Sorry, you guys. You know I need to trim my bangs and it's on my last nerve. So, you know, I push things to the side. Do you not do this with regular clothes too? Those are my, those are my skinny jeans, but I'm not in my skinny jeans yet, so I'm just gonna put them over there. Well, I did it with my workout clothes, and then every day, you know, I'm putting on the workout clothes that I feel good and comfortable in. And you might say, hey, that's good. But on the other hand, if you don't put on something that is maybe a little tight, uh, where you, wherever it is that you need to work, wherever it is that you have fat. Um, if you don't go to the gym, then you're gonna stay in this little comfort zone of, you know, for me. Um, comfort zone and, and real comfort zone and private zone is when I stay at home and I train here. Now, what have you guys seen in me? I'm just being brutally honest. I can look at this calendar and tell you that when my back pain started to happen, and I do give myself um, credit there, you know, when that back pain started to happen, there were times when I could barely move. So it's not like I'm saying, Kelly, you just skipped your workouts. That's not it. But on the other hand, it, it, it started, um, it started me in a system or a daily habit of staying home and doing whatever I could at home. Well, that's almost in a way keeping yourself into, you know, again, it's like you're in a private room with the windows down and no one knows what you're doing. Only you. So you can kid yourself and go, well, I'm still doing the best I can. I'm still, you know, doing some light cardio. I'm still doing this. But realistically, if you're not tracking everything, measuring everything, and really on your game, you can keep 
you know, kind of backing up and backing up and you're getting into a more and more comfortable zone. And then, I've said this to you guys before, when my hormones first changed years ago, I would stay like a recluse in my house because I had this skin condition on my arm and my chest. And Kelly Gregorakis jokes with me all the time. I would stay at home in my sweats, in my robe, so I didn't look at myself in the mirror. I didn't want to look at myself in the mirror. And I have this, you know, robe on, and that was like my comfort area. And so I, I was not becoming aware. I was so focused on my skin, and I, it would sometimes hurt if I would um, sweat a lot, so then I would not work out. And again, if you're not tracking things, you think you've worked out and maybe only skipped a day or two, but really, you skipped four days. And then when you're only wearing sweats around the house and you're not going out and you're not wearing your jeans, all of a sudden, you know, you can go to put those jeans on and it's been six weeks and you're like, holy hell, where did this muffin top come from? It's a practice, it is a way of putting yourself into, it's almost like putting yourself on a bench, putting yourself into the non-productive zone. Um, but if you, like me, have had this train of thought, you can realize how it just builds and it builds and it builds and suddenly it's affected everything and you don't even realize it. You know, I have let myself become so insecure that I literally have viewed myself as harshly as somebody that weighs 700 pounds. And I'm not saying, don't get me wrong people, I'm not saying like, look at me, I'm so much better than somebody that weighs anything. That's not the point. The point is, I'm going back and forth with Whitney, and I sent her, she goes, I need your current weight, I need your current measurements, I need everything, you know, blah, 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 and I'm so excited, and you know, I sent her a picture. She goes, Kelly, and this is coming from Whitney, like one of the people with these physiques that I look at and I'm like, and she goes, I know what you weigh and I know where we're, we're shooting for you. And she said, it's more about measurements and whatever than your weight. But um, she goes, Kelly, your picture right now where you are is what a lot of my clients would like is their after picture. And I'm like, you know, it. don't get me wrong. It didn't put me in a place where I'm like, oh, well, I'll just stop. It just put things into perspective that here I am feeling so sorry for myself and getting myself so wound up, which of course goes back to what I said before, creating stress, creating anxiety, which is also bad for your health, creates cortisol imbalances, yada, yada, yada. I'm working on keeping my stress down. So I'm, I've created this monster and it's kept me in this comfort zone of, no, I, I would say this to myself, you guys. I can't tell you how many times. I would say this before I got the flu. Uh, the end of last year, you know, and I would make excuses with Whitney about why I hadn't gone to see the hormonal doctor yet. I, I got my blood work done, but I kept putting things off because I think realistically in my mind, I, I don't know. There was part of me that didn't want to face things and I'd gotten in this place of thinking, I'm always going to only get so far. I'm always going to be here. I'm so used to not having these answers that I'm just not going to go. I don't know that I was consciously thinking that, but, um, as I started to get ready and, and she, you know, I had her old program, I remember every single time I would get ready to go to the gym, I'm like, I'm too fat to go to the gym. I'll go next week. And then if I wasn't perfect that week, then I wouldn't go the next week. And then it just keeps, so, you know, you're getting yourself, if you're, if you're in this mindset that I've been in, you're getting yourself into a mindset of you feel like a failure because you didn't go to the gym. You're down on yourself because you feel like, I'm too fat to go to the gym. I don't look good enough to go to the gym. I haven't made enough progress to go to the gym. That's why you go to the gym. Hello. <laughs> so um, number two, you know, when you go to the gym or maybe it's not going to the gym, people, maybe it's working out at home. But if it's going to the gym and you've had that mindset with me, like like me, that you, you're beating yourself up and then you're punishing yourself and not putting yourself in the one place that you should be, which is improving, working out, doing more, and not worrying. How stupid is it that all I've been doing is worrying about what people are gonna think of me instead of just going, you know what, I have work to do. I am here to do this, and if you over there, you don't like how I look, or you over there think whatever you think of me, that's not my problem. That attitude of letting what others think of me and just you know, giving out a positive vibe and, and having a positive attitude, it's those changes 
that have made a huge difference in my personal life with family, with uh, ex coworkers, with you know current co coworkers, whoever it is, people in my life. I've changed my attitude to not worrying about what people think and not living my life trying to make everybody happy. And yet. This is one area where when I really looked at things, I figured it out. I'm like, this is so stupid. You guys, when I saw all this, it was just like the focus thing I had before and that moment of awareness, it changed everything. This, this is changing everything for me. For the first time, I've had these goals. If you've been watching my videos, I've had these goals for the past three or four years literally and I have done the work everybody's always said Kelly you when you start in a program you do it and yet if I get into any area of doubt of you know I'm not reaching my goals I'm not where I want to be then I start inching back and it and now that I can see that it's different but I would start inching back like oh I gained weight and then I would think of I would be insecure and think that everybody was staring at me and so I wouldn't go and then I'd stop weighing myself because I'd be scared of what the scale would say. And then I'd stop, you know, because you do that, then you stop working out. And then it's easier for you to say, I'll just have an extra Quest Bar. And then you had an extra Quest Bar yesterday, so you have an extra Quest Bar the next day. And pretty soon, you guys, it just steamrolls because you've made allowances for yourself and you're feeling bad for yourself and it just keeps getting out of control. Do you see what I'm saying? You know what the difference is now? The difference is now I'm putting on my clothes and I'm going to the gym and even though I've always been somebody who I put my stuff on, I went to the gym, I wasn't there to put makeup on and, and impress anybody, I still was insecure. The time when I started to make the most progress was when I trained with that jerk. I'm not even going to mention his name. But he was just my friend, he was my trainer and he gave me the accountability. I wasn't there to impress him, I wasn't there to impress anybody else, I just had a buddy um, who in retrospect in many ways. I wish I'd never met, but all things happen for a reason. So when I went, I, I had a good attitude. I had an attitude of I'm putting myself in someone's capable hands and I'm gonna make I'm gonna, you know, make progress here. That's how I am now, but even better. Because now I'm not gonna not wear the clothes I have in my closet. I'm not gonna only, you know, burn my favorite candles that I've bought. You know, oh, I need to save that for a special occasion. Today's a special occasion. You know what? I'm not going to not wear this if I think, oh my God, you know, somebody might be able to see my bra line. Everybody has a bra line. I got to get over it. I'm there to do the work. And every second that I don't do the work is I'm taking that and I'm robbing myself. I hope that in this 17 minute, gosh, it's 18 minutes now rambling message that I've gotten across to you, like my past two videos, those have been, or maybe they've been three, these have been just like huge game-changing moments for me. I hope if anybody has had the same kind of issues that I've had, that this helps you. Because for me, I don't know. I just can say, have I been excited about goals before in the past? Yeah. Have I had a plan? Yeah. Have I ended up the past three or four years always to some degree getting into that scared zone? Yes. Now. These are changes I'm making up here that are completely, uh, I'm saying changes that are game changers, but they are. That's, that's all I can say. So I hope you guys get it. I hope that I've helped maybe one person because for me, it's such a huge difference that, I don't know, I, I've just never felt more certain and better than I do right now. Those two big, massive changes that have uh, an influence in so many areas in my life, personally, professionally, whatever, um, it's just, it, it's a game changer. Everything is different now. It, the only thing that's not different is the fact that I'm always screwing around with my hair. So more videos to follow. Guys, 19 minutes. I'm sorry.